I'm a new media artist, and I'm here to talk to you about empty spaces. Blank, empty surfaces that surround us, they permeate our lives. Where we live, where we work, in our homes, in the buildings, in the cities that surround us, blank walls. Even in the schools where we go to school and we learn, our classrooms where we educate ourselves, filled with static, blank, empty surfaces. Now this is what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about how we transform these static, empty spaces into multimedia environments permanently. My work has involved a variety of different things, from lights to sculptures to 3D printing to projection mapping. And projection mapping is the thing I want to talk to you about specifically. It's the perfect way to transform these multimedia environments. For example, the thing we did at the Sydney Opera House, we converted the organ into an organ of light and connected it into the keyboarder's keys. So when he played on the stage, he played the organs, but using light. Now, I haven't always been a new media artist. In fact, my background's a little bit strange. I grew up in Wales, where I was a rugby playing cellist. Uh, pretty random. And then I went off to university and studied marine biology. I gave it all up and became a drum and bass DJ. <laughs> At no point in my life have I had a training in technology or art for that matter, but I found my way through and I started to experiment and understand ways to use technology to create artwork with. And I believe projection mapping is such an important tool for the future, not just to make pretty lights, not just to change our environment to make things go ooh and ah, but I think there's such an important place in our world for projection mapping for things like education and also cultural communication, bridging the gap with sensitive and difficult subjects right where it's needed. One of the projects I've been working on was with the indigenous communities of Australia on a project called Vivid Path to the Future. We've created a projection mapped blessing for the building. We rebuilt the walls with sacred plants and rocks, and the indigenous community artists placed their hands on, blessing this building. It was an 1800s building filled with indigenous artifacts. And they wiped clean the building, creating a new future, one that was colorful and filled with vibrant, creative indigenous artwork. We actually developed this system specifically for these artists and we shot the whole thing in four hours in a studio in the back of this university and this was the first time the university had ever been projection mapped so it was a really auspicious moment. 900 indigenous community came down and saw the opening of this alongside 38,000 people. It was quite an amazing moment. It was streamed live on television to millions and it changed the way I started to look at projection mapping. I was like, we don't need to go into the, 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 the super tech. We can do this stuff really simply. So the following year, we got to do it again. But this time, we teamed up with indigenous rapper MC Boom Marley and his crew. And they were like, yeah, we want to spray paint the building, please. And I was like, look, let's try and do it in light. So we went into a disused tunnel. And we created an outline of the building. And we got those kids to spray paint it. They spray painted the words, one voice, help me, help you, bridge the gap. Really powerful messages of reconciliation. I want to play you the intro to it. Generation one thing. Oh, it's about closing the gap. Why, well, what gap? You know, between black followers and white followers. It's called disadvantage. What are we going to do about it? We're, We're going to make a change. If you help me, cousin, I help you. Imagine all the mad things we could do Coming through, trying to be the best I can We're going on a journey now, take my hand Coming up with the sun, make a brighter day So get up, step up and have your say Stand up, put your hand up, break the chain We'll be part of a new generation First time we had like a mini mosh pit in front of our projection mapping system <laughs> But today we've had 150 different artists from 15 different countries Collaborating on the idea of reconciliation People from outside Australia creating artwork about indigenous reconciliation We not only transform this building in lights we turned it into a place of cultural communication, where we could all communicate about difficult subjects and celebrate our differences and our similarities. It was an amazing project for me to be involved with. This work continues today with companies like Autodesk and Epson Projectors, where we're projection mapping sacred spaces around the world so that we can provide those tools to indigenous communities to tell their stories with. Can you imagine? the rock face of Uluru in Australia coming to life with the creation story of the Aboriginal people, or even the Balinese temples waking up with the gods that they're dedicated to. 
We believe this will empower indigenous nations from around the world to tell us their story and allow us to understand it in very simplistic terms. I decided I wanted to use my marine biology degree for some reason. I went to university for three years and I had no use whilst I was a drum and bass DJ for a marine biology degree. <laughs> so I created this project called True Life. Now, True Life is when we put Mother Nature into the projection mapping systems. We created a sculpture based on a crystal of sea salt, sodium chloride, the main component of the oceans. And we projection mapped it with images of the ocean, sea life, plants and animals and cells, creating this living, breathing communication about ocean conservation. We even filmed fag butts and plastic floating in the water. And as people were standing in front of it going, oh, wow, it's so beautiful, they suddenly realized they were looking at ocean pollution and we delivered the message, we should look after our oceans. But once we were looking at this, we were standing there on the street, looking at these little cells growing across the sculpture. We had a massive light bulb moment. I was like, whoa, can we, can we actually grow buildings? So we embarked on this really ambitious project with the University of New South Wales and the University of Sydney with their quantum labs, the places where they get, they're actually making the quantum chips right now. And we're using their technology that they're using to create these chips, a kind of photolithography, to create microscopic stamps of the outlines of buildings. And you can just about make out that this is one of the Opera House. That's 0.7 of a mil across. And we use these stamps to stamp onto microscope slides a kind of cell glue. And what we do is we put the cells onto the cell glue, and they stick to it, and they go into the microscope slide, and we video it as these cells are growing in the shapes of buildings. And then we take that and we projection map that back onto the buildings. Hey presto, we have living, growing buildings, but not like trees or plants, with microscopic processes. Now, it all sounds really simple. It's far more technical than that. And this is about as far as we've got, because we keep stopping and starting. But when we do get there, which we will eventually, with a bit more money and a bit more time and a few more scientists, can you imagine what this will do for our education systems? Instead of walking into your classroom and turning to page 236 of your biological textbook, you can actually step inside having a kind of psychedelic cellular experience. <laughs> you know? You'll be able to see the, the cells moving around you. You can make friends with them. So it's a really amazing thing. Or can you imagine transforming your bedroom into the ISS space station as it circles the planet? Or even the Amazon rainforest or the deep sea? These are things that we can do today. When I was a kid, I just had flipping posters of Guns N' Roses, <laughs> and maybe a little one of Pamela Anderson behind the door. <laughs> now we can do whatever it is that we want to. And the only reason why these kids don't have it today is because some of these projectors are literally like 30,000 quid. We're in the middle of a technological revolution which is going to change the world. It's going to transform the way in which we do things. Technology is going to get faster and faster, and, uh, and everything's going to get a lot easier. And one of these things that's happening right now is artificial intelligence. It's a buzzword in the tech world right now. We're actually working to prepare ourselves for artificial intelligence into 10 years into the future by figuring out ways that we can use projection mapping to enable us to develop new tools specifically for artificial intelligence. One of these tools is strapping a projection mapping system to an artificial intelligent computer to create a tool that can potentially change the planet. Now, we believe that when we give artificial intelligence systems the ability to learn from the projection mapping systems rather than the kids or the people in the, the bedrooms, we can create things that are really amazing, but also slightly scary. I see a lot of you around here looking at artificial intelligence and, 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 being, and being a little bit nerved by it, but it's, it should be exciting. One of the things we're working on right here in Ubud, right now, is something called plant mapping. When we're using artificial intelligence systems to projection map plants with projection light, using specifically the right form of light projection mapped onto the greenest parts of the plant. Even a rugby playing Welshman can work out that that is where photosynthesis is produced. <laughs> but we are enabling these projection mapping systems to learn from their systems, right? So what we're doing is we're creating a biofeedback where the camera is recording the plant's growth and recording the way in which the plant is growing and reacting to this light. We th it then tells the artificial intelligence to, to project, projection map a different layer of intensity or spectrum or duration onto the plant, kind of like plant hacking. 
right? Where these computers can automatically figure out ways to grow plants as fast as possible using projection light, laser light. It uses no electricity whatsoever. I believe in the future this could be one of the most amazing tools to use and it will transform our world. We'll be able to figure out ways to use artificial intelligence to terraform the planet, to grow billions and billions of trees so fast, faster than any greenhouse on the planet, to repopulate the planet with trees or plants to help us prevent things like climate change. Or maybe even can develop systems for farming in space. These are all possibilities from projection mapping. Now, it's a pretty big call for a Welshman who used to be a drum and bass DJ to make, but I, I, I feel that when we apply these tools in the future and we look in the, into the future, these are things that we can really start to work towards. So as you go home tonight and you look around you and you start to notice these empty spaces and your empty walls, remember that a rugby-playing Welshman once told you you could turn them into anything you want. Thank you very much. <laughs>